In the previous video, we saw how to download image data set for specific classes using OID v4 toolkit. Now, how to convert these downloaded images to YOLO support annotation format. We saw that the annotation CSV files that got downloaded along with images had a lot of other details and the data contained in it was not in YOLO support format. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, we will uh, see how to create annotation files for each image downloaded in the previous video so that we can build our own custom object detection model. We will see how to convert the annotations that are contained in the annotation files generated with images using OID v4 tool into YOLO format. We will be using Google Colab Jupyter Notebook to write the code to convert the annotations into YOLO format. So watch this video till the end. This video might be little long but believe me if you watch it till the end you will learn very new concepts and tricks that will help you for long time in your machine learning journey. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel. Lot of times I see people appreciating the content but forgetting to subscribe due to immense excitement. Please show your love and support by liking, sharing and subscribing to this video as I will feel highly motivated. If you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. You can download the code related Jupyter notebooks and other related materials by enrolling to this course on the AI University website. If you like to go through these courses on your mobile device, then consider downloading the AI University Android app. All the courses are offered for free on our website. In the earlier videos, we saw that for every image file, we need to have a corresponding annotation text file with the name same as image file and that can tell us about classes location, specific classes location number objects center x, objects center y, height, width, etc. Although we have a label text file generated for each corresponding image that contain the info such as objects center x, objects center y, height, width, class name, yet I wanted to tell you how to make use of class description boxable.csv and train annotation dot, uh, bb box dot csv files to convert data into desired format. It is useful to know the process to generate the data files directly from the source so that you don't have to worry if in case your label folder gets corrupted. You can generate these text files from these bounding box CSV files directly at any time. Let me show you what am I talking about. So in the previous video we saw that uh, a new OID folder got generated uh, when we ran the command to download the images and inside this OID folder there were two subfolders CSV folder and data set. Now let's go inside this data set folder first. So inside this coffee tea subfolder we have this label subfolder created for all the images. So for each corresponding image there is a corresponding text file here. So you can see that we have the class name as well as other details here. Now what if this folder gets corrupted due to unforeseen event? How will you get this data back again? One way is to download the entire data set once again, but that's quite a time consuming task or activity. You know, if you are downloading thousands of images, I would tell you the way to recreate this data in, uh, text files from these two CSV files contained inside CSV folder. So we will be making use of these two CSV files. Let, let me show you the content of this these two files. First let me open class description boxable. So this file contains these two columns. Number one is unique identifier and the corresponding class name. Okay. So this is our first file and this is the second file. Okay. Which is train annotation bbbox.csv. Okay. And it also contains a lot of data here. So we'll be making use of this data to generate the txt files I showed you earlier. 
so you can see that we have an image id here source label name confidence x min x max y min y max then we have is occluded is truncated is group of is depiction is inside so these columns are not required actually uh, we won't be making use of these columns so i was referring these two csv files only for generating the bounding box info uh, in terms of text files okay for each image each individual line here represents one object of the image it can be the case that there are objects that can appear more than once in a given image hence same image id can appear several times now as we know from previous video we need bounding box information in the form of center x center y objects width objects height so we will convert this information into yolo supported form as a first step we will have to upload these two folders namely csv folder and dataset folder to the google drive we have okay because we will be making use of google collaboratory to write the code so first create a separate folder with the name yolo v4 so i have already created it and you can always create any new folder by right clicking on it and then clicking on new folder now i have created another subfolder with the name dataset and annotations to upload the csv and dataset folders inside it so you can see that i already have these two folders which i uploaded already so this is the google collab file which i created for creating the annotations for each image or creating the corresponding txt file that will contain the annotation details for each object in the given image so this is my google collab notebook so here we will see the code to convert the csv file data for each object uh, in the images we downloaded into yolo's text file format so here first we are mounting the google drive so that we can access the content of our yolo v4 folder we are importing the necessary python packages such as pandas and os in the next cell i will be using pandas for performing data frame operations and os for uh, initializing the paths in the next cell we are changing the directory path or directory to the location where we have the csv folder that contains the two csv files right so you can see that uh, the path where i have these two csv file is this one which i already showed you earlier and one csv file contains the names of the classes and another one contains the annotation details that we want to convert it into yolo format if you have jumped directly on this video and is wondering what are these two csv files and how these uh, two got generated then you can watch this video to know more link is given in the i button above so we are using os packages uh, chdir function to change the directory part to the one inside the brackets then we are reading our csv file that contains uh, details of 600 classes along with the unique identifier string associated with that particular class i just used a head function to show you the subset of the data in the next cell we first define the classes for which we downloaded the image data set in the previous video we downloaded coffee and tea images data set so we uh, defined it here next we wanted to extract the unique identifier strings related to the classes uh, coffee and t hence first we created an empty list named as class strings we would be storing the unique string values inside this list only in the next line we are using for loop to iterate through classes list and using dot lse method to match class name in the classes list with the one in the second column of the data frame uh, we named as classes data and then extracting the first column's unique string line of code uh, req underscore classes dot i lock and in brackets zeros is used to extract the first column value you can see that i printed those uh, values in the next line finally we are appending these unique strings values in the list we created as class strings we used append method for that purpose so when i run this cell we got the output as this one and this is the list class strings that contain the unique identifiers 
In the next cell, we are reading our second CSV file that contains annotation data. In this CSV file, we have a lot of columns. We don't require all of them. Hence, we are using argument use calls while reading the CSV file with the help of read underscore CSV method. You can see that I have printed first few rows it, of it for you. Columns such as is oculate, is truncated, is group of etc. are not required from the CSV file. Hence, I excluded them here. We wanted only image ID, label name, xmin, xmax, ymin and ymax only. Now, the data frame contains a lot of records and we wanted only those records whose label name is matching with the ones contained in class strings. This is something which I am doing in the next cell. And I am using .loc method for that purpose. We are using copy function to create a copy of this data frame. We are doing this so that we, uh, in case any issue occurs, then original data frames data won't get impacted. I have also shown the subset of data using head function for you in the next line. In the next cell, we are initializing the columns such as uh, class number, center x, center y, width, height, etc. required for YOLO format. Then in the next cell, uh, we are populating these column values by performing some operations. Class number is populated by making use of for loop to iterate through all the class strings and assigning a class number according to the order they are in the list. Next, center x is calculated by first adding x max and x min values and then dividing it by 2. Center y value is calculated in a similar fashion. The width is calculated by subtracting x min value from x max and height is calculated by cal uh, subtracting y min from y max. Finally, we are just creating a data frame with these new values plus the image ID column. We are then creating a copy of this data frame for the reasons cited previously. You can see that the subset of rows of this new data frame named as YOLO values here. In the next cell, we are creating the annotation text file for the given image containing annotation details for that image such as image id class number center x center y width and height we are naming uh, this text file uh, same as the name of the image in order to follow yolo guidelines we are saving this file next to the corresponding image file only so first we are changing the current directory to the one where we have all the images we are again using chdir function of os package we are making use of uh, for loop to iterate through all the uh, files in a given directory so first for loop iterate through the current directory and second for loop checks for the existence of any file if any file exists then check if the name ends with dot jpg extension if yes then it just extracts the uh, title of the image that is title without extension so that it can use that title to give the same name to the text file. We are using .loc method to locate all the rows that satisfies condition image id equals to image title in order to get all the rows for the current image. It can be one row describing the object or it can be several rows de uh, depicting several objects in that image. Then we are creating a final data frame having only required columns in that annotation text file. We are creating a string to give a name to this text file which happens to be the same name as image file as I quoted earlier. It will be saved along with image. So image path stores the path value, image title holds the file name and .txt is the extension we are storing the uh, complete path name in a variable name at save path. Finally we are saving this file using two csv function. We don't require header row and index values, hence the corresponding argument values are kept as false. Separator value is kept as blank here. When I ran the cell, I got the annotation text files created in the same folder where my images are and, and you can see them here. right? So there is a, a text file corresponding to each image. right? So we have this text file for this image, this text file for this and this one for this right let's open one of the text file so let me open let's say this one so you can now see the bond bounding box information for the image object in the 
YOLO format. So this is the location number. This is center X. This is center Y. This is width and this is height. Finally, we need to create a text file with the name classes.txt that contain class information of coffee and tea. We are going to use this file in later video before we do actual training of our object detection model. So you can just open the text editor uh, in the Google Colab and write class names as coffee and tea. So coffee in, will be in the first line, tea would be in the second line. Save this file in the same directory where we have our downloaded images. So folks, this is it for this video. In the next upcoming video, I will cover another important topic of the YOLO v4 series. So my uh, classes.txt file is kept in the same folder where I have images as well as the text files that we generated a while ago. So folks, this is it for this video. In the next upcoming video, I will cover another important topic of the YOLO v4 series. So here is today's question. Are you liking this YOLO v4 playlist series so far? Please post your answers, comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.